Should you be offended when someone wishes you Merry Christmas? In fact, can you be offended by what someone says? Or are you making a choice that you will be offended by what they say? Welcome to Share.Care, an all-inclusive community sharing experience, strength, and hope to create strong, healthy, and inspiring relationships. Share.Care communities work toward every individual feeling safe, valued, and heard, free from the threat of danger, pain, or harm. Each episode, founder Damian Andrews explores the principles underpinning Share.Care, and invites expert special guests to share their knowledge so you can easily reap the benefits so many others experience. You hold the choice to create your future. Let it be with strong, healthy, and inspiring relationships. Hello and welcome to an On The Couch episode of the Shared.Care podcast. Our belief is that global peace starts at home. Feeling safe, valued, and heard gives you a foundation to confidently step out and make the world a happier and safer place for everyone. Because in today's world, it's in your own selfish best interest to help others. I have lots of friends from different cultures, and when they are celebrating their festivities, whatever that might be, and they wish me well from that celebration, be it Happy Hanukkah or or something like that, do I get offended by that? Um, I like to celebrate in what other people are experiencing. So for someone to wish me, you know, happy Hanukkah or uh, a number of any, any one of those good wishes, it's not about whether, you know, I should join their religion or, or whatever it is. It's, it's celebrating the joy that they're sharing. For me, that's how I experience it. I mean, I have a, a business partner of mine. He's from Persia. His background is Persian. Um, and there's so many wonderful things I had did not know about that culture uh, before we, we got together and and he started sharing some of that experience. And it's to me, I found it really fascinating and really wonderful. And when he, you know, when something a special occasion come up and he would say, you know, this is what the special occasion is, I'd be excited by that. It was like, wow, this is something new, something I can learn from, something that's going to help me grow and become a better person. And so this is where, when we're talking about you know, um, celebrations and this time of year, this this will come out uh, just before Christmas. And uh, there is a lot of talk about whether we should say Merry Christmas. And, you know, is it politically correct? There, <laughs> well, it's actually, there's people that say it's not politically correct to say Happy Christmas. Um, and I just, just wonder, you know, where that is coming from, from the other side of you know, the fence. I mean, what is it about someone wishing you well, wanting to share their experience? I mean, obviously, if someone's imposing something on you, well, that, that's a little bit different. Uh, but we're not talking about that. We're not talking about someone standing over and saying, you must believe in Christmas, or you must believe in Hanukkah, or you must believe in whatever. We, we have that choice. That's one of the choices that we have. Uh, certainly in the more civilized parts of the world is we have freedom of choice. So we can share things, but that doesn't mean that we're imposing on that. We can share our joy. It's like, yeah, I, I personally um, think it's, it's wonderful to be able to share in, in what others are experiencing. And I've been quite fortunate in my growing up and throughout my life to have been around people from a variety of different cultures from a, and I've traveled to a variety of different I've been to I think, it's, I think it's 42 or 44 somewhere around that area different countries in the world and it's amazing you know fundamentally I've found that people are generally the same we all have uh, a smile is a smile wherever you go you know um, people want to enjoy their life wherever you go People want good things for their children wherever you go. Um, they want to enjoy time with their friends wherever you go. Uh, you know, those are fundamental things that I found across all cultures people want. And so fundamentally, we're the same. 
then we have some differences of ex, uh, within our cultures and that we express them. But even to that detail, I, I found it amusing. I have lots of um, friends from Chinese culture and they love their dumplings, Chinese dumplings, we do. Um, I'm Polish Ukrainian. I grew up with pierogi. Uh, to me, they're, they're the same thing. Pierogi a little bit bigger and the, and the, um, the pastry is a little bit thicker. But outside of that, they're essentially the same thing. The, the ingredients in there, which I think the ingredients inside is probably a product of what was available for people making them. Um, potato and onion in a dumpling is not common, but it is common in pierogi. Uh, but they're essentially the same thing. And for me to want to share my pierogi with someone who's Chinese and has dumplings, well, it's like, wow, we've got something in common here. And that's where when I'm looking at it from where we go, okay, well, is, if someone said to me, happy Hanukkah, I'd be like, wow, you've got a celebration that's really important to you and that means a lot to you. And I'd like to learn more about that. I'd like to know what's special about that for you because if it's such an important celebration, it's obviously special. And I'd like to know what that is. I'd like to understand that because it must have some meaning. It must have something that is, you know, important and it must have some inherent goodness about it otherwise people wouldn't be celebrating it and this is where again we we go okay people get offended by that and that's why i want to have another a look at offense as well because one of the the codes that we created under share.care is to laugh at yourself and not take offense at the opinion of others and why is that why do we, I mean, why do we take offense? I mean, is it something that somebody does and, and it's a, a forced on you? So it's an involuntary reaction, which is kind of concerning if it is, because that means someone can control you. It's, you know, if you take offense, if you must take offense, it's what someone says. Like you must, it's, it's an emotion. Uh, offense is an emotion. It's similar to being upset. Um, some people, when something happens, um, you know, let's say there's a car crash. Someone's in a car crash. Some people will get really upset and distraught. And I've, I've seen that where someone's had a car crash and they're just emotionally um, very distraught. They're shaking. They're uh, really shook up by that event. And that's a very, you know, a car crash can be a traumatic thing. And sim people that have had a similar car accident, um, just like, yeah, what's your insurance? And We'll, um, we'll sort this out and, and not a problem. It's the same event, different reaction. And that's where, from that perspective, it's like, well, can someone control your emotions? Which, again, if someone can control your emotions, that's kind of concerning. It means that you don't have free will. You don't have the ability to choose. It's like, well, this happens. I must react this way. That, that's really concerning if that was the case. Um, and I think in the way... I'm wording it now that it's pretty clear that it's not the case. You, you know, you don't, you're not, free will exists. You have the ability to choose. You have the ability to choose your response. And that's why we say laugh at yourself. Well, first of all, you're laughing at yourself. If someone says something to you, um, and that's why they're linked together, laugh at yourself and don't take offense at the opinions of others. And I can say that because... No one can offend me. <laughs> I don't get offended by what other people say. It's, it just doesn't matter. There's a number of reasons why that is. One is um, I have a very strong opinion of myself and, and where I'm positioned in the world. Um, if someone says something about me that you know um, might be derogatory or they don't like my skill or whatever, well, that, that's their opinion and they're entitled to it. Um, again, they have that right to have their opinion if they don't like me and maybe you know they've experienced something that justifies that i'm not perfect um i've made mistakes and it's something for me to look at and go well yeah maybe there's room for improvement on my behalf and that's one of the reasons i don't take offense the other is the you know the opinion of the other person what is their position you know are they perfect are they able to say hey you know, I'm going to stand on my high horse and because, you know, I'm better than you and I've got that right to make that decision? Well, no. We're, and this is where equality comes in. We're all equal, so that's your opinion. That's not my opinion of myself. Is that putting aside that caveat of maybe there is something I could learn?
And it's really, you know, also looking at it from the perspective, a lot of times when somebody will say something offensive, it's quite provocative and it's done for that um, provocation. It is to elicit a response. And that's where it comes back to, well, are you in control or not? Um, from my perspective, you know, um, when someone says something to elicit a response, and I have this, I've had this all a lot in negotiations that I've been part of, people will get personal about that and, and make comments about things. Um, there's times where uh, one in particular, <laughs> it's quite funny, or well, I think it's funny. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I wear a suit. Well, when I wear a suit, sometimes I wear braces. They'll, they'll braces that go over your shoulder, and, and um, I, I like them. I think they're pretty cool. And it, I think, yeah. So I think they're classy. But yeah, there was one person at this, and I was constantly dealing with him, an older gentleman, and he, he um, made some comments about that. And one time, he actually grabbed my braces and flicked them, and made some comment. And I just went, well, and I stayed focused on what we were doing what was interesting about that was later that day after he did that it was it was a little bit later he goes you know i wish i had the confidence to wear braces because they're really cool which was it was kind of interesting to hear that because i at that time i could have reacted and gone oh, don't you dare touch me or don't which you know i'm not suggesting you should touch you know people touching each other in a business sense but to me it was like well whatever um and it was just interesting from that perspective. Had I reacted, it might have resulted in an escalation of you know, some tension between us, might have affected the negotiation. Uh, the fact that I didn't react just went, yeah, whatever. Um, it de-escalated you know, the whole situation, creator, and it, then he gave the reveal that actually he would like to do that, he just didn't have the courage to do that because it's not, you know, that wasn't the trend. It's still not the trend, I don't think. Um, braces is not a common thing to wear even though they are pretty cool. Um, so if you want to wear braces, take this as a, go and do it. It's like, it's, it is cool. Um, and that's where, you know, again, from that perspective of being in control of yourself, it's like, well, is it, you know, is that the opinion of your, you? And that's the other reason I don't get offended when someone, no matter what someone says about me, is that my opinion of me? Um, you know, one is, can I, you know, Maybe there might be something in there that I can learn and do better. So I take that on board. And that's a, a great way to improve quickly is to take on feedback and learn from that. But same token too, recognize that it is um, an opinion and it is related to, in most cases, related to a behavior, not the person. We need to separate behavior and person. Um, fundamentally, I believe you know, I'm, a, I'm a good person. Um, my behavior sometimes I do things incorrectly I, or do things not in the most um, efficient manner or the most productive manner. That doesn't make, make me a bad person. It's just what I know at that point in time. And the other thing to do, you know, in that sense is that's, that's why, I, yeah, so I was going to say that's why I don't get offended. I just separate that out. And this is even more so, I think, with the internet. Um, and people, I, I find it amusing on the internet because especially when you have social media and someone will do a post and generally how the algorithm, algorithms work in the background is the more interaction with that post, the higher it's going to rank. And, and people deliberately do things in a provocative way because they know other people are going to jump online and go, hey, how can you say that? It doesn't really matter what is said in the comment. The fact that there's a reaction is what gets noticed because the algorithms are not looking and going, okay, this was a favorable comment. This one didn't like it. But they don't look at that. They just go, oh, reaction, reaction, reaction. Um, so, and this is one thing if you, you know, if you are listening to this and you, and you do do that, you make negative comments about a post because you want to correct it. All you're doing is giving it more publicity. It's, it's better just not to say anything and it'll just, you know, the less comments it has, the less people are going to see it. You actually making comment about it is going to bring that to the attention of others. And that happens so often in the media where, you know, something that probably, you know, if it had been left alone, would have just died out. But the fact that people react to it and give an uproar, it makes it visible to so many more people. 
and so that's that's opinion you know someone's opinion and being offended by someone's opinion particularly if it's directed at you it's like well yeah um <laughs> so what yeah, and that's particularly why we have the code uh, and that part of the code is laugh at yourself um, and don't take offense at the opinions of others because at the end of the day it really doesn't matter you'll go oh yeah but i've got to correct that i mean uh, i'm worried about my reputation um or aren't you worried about your reputation? I've had people ask me that and saying, aren't you worried about your reputation if someone says something negative about you? And it's like, well, no, I'm not actually. Um, because why am I not worried about my reputation? Well, one, I, I have no control over that in reality. Um, you know, People's opinions and, and their thoughts are generally not going to be swayed. They have an opinion and that's it. But an example is um, I use an iPhone. I've always used an iPhone since the very first one come out. I'm never going to buy anything else. I'm always going to buy an iPhone. It doesn't matter what anybody says, unless you know, Apple go broke or do something ridiculous. But if they continue on doing what they're doing with their products, I will always use uh, an Apple phone. And no one's going to change my opinion on it. And that's generally the case for a lot of people's opinions. So when someone you know, has that opinion, especially if they don't know you, you you know, are not going to change their opinion. The other thing is the people that do know you, um, the, the, they're not going to be swayed by that opinion if they if they do know you. And, and I've had that experience as well, where I've had people be highly critical of me in, in a personal sense, in a, um, a corporate sense, uh, and they've said things that you know um, really well. You could say really offensive. Which most people go, well, that, that, you've got to defend that. Well, do I? Because what I've found is um, the people that I know that really that know me, one, they don't believe it to start with. They go, well, that's not you. We know that's not you. Um, that's not how you, you know, you, that's, that's wrong. And they actually come to your defense, <laughs> which is kind of cool. I didn't, I didn't get offended. And you know, I got people coming to my, oh, that's not true. How can, how can you say that about Damien? And it's like, well, hang on, just let him go. It doesn't matter. It's okay. Um, because, and th that's it. what really stands out is it's amazing. You know, the people that really do care about you, they won't be swayed by that. The people that don't um, like you, then they're not going to be convinced to like you. That you know, the chance of that is is negligible. It's as much chance as me using a different phone other than an Apple. Um, so why would we get all worked up about that? You're not going to be able to change any of that. Um, you know, and you go, well, what about the people sitting on the fence? Well, yeah, maybe, but are they? What relevance are they to your life? Um, that's where I, I look at it from my perspective. I mean, I don't want to be trying to convince people I, I don't do this with clients i don't do this with guests on my podcast um, if you're interested fantastic love to be um, working with you to to you know to grow and um and learn together and and create some wonderful things together if i've got to convince you that you should work with me i'm like mm, i don't know if i want to do that it's too much effort i'd rather work with people that want to work with me than me trying to convince someone that's on the fence. It's like, well, do I really want to spend that time? And it's very rare that I'd be in a situation uh, that I will want to spend time convincing someone um, that you know they should you know work with me, or or or, or that you know this opinion of me is not right. So you should you know discount that, and, and then we can work together. If, if I've got to spend that much time doing that. It's not really productive time. I would rather let that person go, not be part of my life, and focus on the people that are actually wanting to be actively supportive of what I'm doing, that know, that are willing to say, okay, hang on a minute, someone said something about you, that, that's not right, and stand by. It just makes your life so much easier. And that's part of, you know, you've probably, if you're listening to this, you've probably heard me talk about, you know, life is pretty easy. It is easy if you focus on the right thing. Spending time trying to correct someone's opinion 
um, that is never going to be corrected, or that's on the fence, and you know you've got to spend a lot of time with that. It it is a it, it's a big drain on your time. It's a big drain on your ability to get things done because you're so busy trying to go. Oh, hang on a minute. This is why, and, and and coming up with all these arguments as to why that opinion is wrong, and and they should listen to what you've got to say. But so it's really there's a lot of reasons as to why. I've chosen not to be offended by what people say. I've certainly chosen that they're my emotions as well, and I'm I choose how I react to things. I'm not beholden to someone else. But it's not cause and react where someone does something and it's like for me it's react. You know how dare you and get upset? It's it's hang on, what's going on here? Asking the question, trying to work out okay, is this something that can be helpful in this situation? Rather than just getting offended, um, and that's you know similar. I you know, take it as an example of driving a car. Um, there's times where you know, I've I've accidentally cut someone off, and they honk their horn, and it's like Arr! and they yell. And um, I had that the other day where I was driving along, and the the road, and I was next to a truck, um, you know, big truck, <laughs> big semi trailer, and the road actually ended, so it was two lanes and it went into one and there was no signage to show that all of a sudden the road's ending. I think, holy crap. Um, so I've just floored it because so I could get in front of the truck, not get hit by it or get driven off the road. And the truck didn't seem to be um, slowing down either. I'm guessing either he didn't see or didn't want to slow down, one of the two. And so we get there and we get into the main thoroughfare of where we're going. It's three lanes wide and, and I'd moved over to the other side because that's where I was going. And then the truck accelerated past and the guy put his finger out the window and gave me the bird. And I'm like, do I get offended at that? You know, no, I, I didn't. It was just like, okay, he's, he's upset. Obviously it was a stressful situation and that's um, how he's reacted to that. And for me, it was like, well, okay. And we continued on actually, because then we went the same way. It was kind of funny because I'm thinking, okay, is he going to do anything more? And I'm watching him and it was like, you know, he got left behind because of the way the traffic was. And then he was in front of me again. And, and then we actually both were turning onto the freeway. And, um, and as we pulled up and stopped at the lights, I was a little bit in front of him. And I'm just watching him my room. I'm thinking, is he going to get out and get, you know, get angry at me? And I was, I was just wondering. Um, but no, he didn't get out and then we drove on and, and never heard anything from it again. But, you know, imagine if I had got offended, had got offended. Um, so he's put his finger out at me and I'm going, how dare you put your finger out at me and honk my horn or gone up to him and give him the finger back. That's going to, you know, um, make the situation worse. It's going to add more stress, add more aggravation to a situation, um, whereas I just didn't react and it just went away. Um, and maybe, I mean, the guy, you know, he said it probably was a, uh, I would imagine it was a pretty stressful situation. I would imagine, you know, I like to think people have good intentions and, and he was freaking out because, you know, he's in a big truck and we had it collided. Um, he, you know, somebody could have got hurt and he might've been stressed or worried about that. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know what he was thinking. Um, but <clears throat> had I got angry? And we put that into another scenario. If you're one on one and actually speaking with a person, how'd you get angry? All of a sudden, the blinkers go up. You're you're aggravated. You're angry. You're offended, and you're going. I'm not seeing anything else other than my opinion, and not looking at a a, a wider picture. And I've had that numerous times where something has happened. The person has been upset, whether they've been offended or not. It's because of a misunderstanding or not a bigger picture. I had that with a, um, a, a a podcast interview actually, where you know I I'd missed the podcast and I I got it wrong. I actually got the time wrong. It was my mistake. I'm not sure how I did it, but I got it wrong. And what that led to was me understanding a situation with an employee where that employee wasn't in the best mindset, um, and I that from that situation I was able to help this person actually overcome what could have led to depression um, and and to feel better about themselves. Now the person that missed the podcast was was upset initially. Um, and then, you know, I, I apologized and explained 
um, you know, that I'd made the mistake and, you know, it wasn't normal. And, and then we had a bit of discussion and then they were like, oh, wow, I didn't, you know, to know that this was a trigger to actually help someone else um, was, you know, eye-opening for them and created a deeper, we now have a much deeper relationship um, than we had if, if, you know, although, you know, whether she was offended or not by the fact that I'm sure she was upset, <laughs> you know, um, that this person was upset and you don't want to be, you know, it, but the fact that we were able to have that discussion, I wasn't offended at the fact that she was offended <laughs> and it didn't escalate because um, that's usually what happens. And, and think about that from your perspective. It's usually what happens. You know, someone says, and you, you get offended, then they get offended that you'll get offended. Um, and the, the aggravation rises and rises. And, and, you know, then you're all of a sudden you hate each other. Whereas in this situation, it's like, well, okay, this person's upset. I acknowledge that they're upset. And, and I explained the situation and they understood. And then when they saw the bigger picture, they've gone, oh, wow, that's, um, you know, I'm, I'm actually glad that this, this happened now. You know, and so, and that from that said, we created a deeper relationship. We have a great friendship now because of that. And that's, so that's where, when we're coming back to, you know, this time of year, this time of year is, is Christmas. It's been a, a Christmas, um, you know, for, since the 1600s, uh, as far as I can remember, the first time that, well, not I personally, I wasn't alive in the 1600s, but um, I think I uh, understand the first, one of the first recorded writings of Merry Christmas was in a letter from the 1600s. And so that's been around in this time of year, and this is how people celebrate. Same token too, other people celebrate their holidays differently, and, and why not celebrate in that? What what I, always fascinates me, and this is one I, I'm like, people are getting offended at this, you know, someone else's holiday. So why don't we band together, you know, band, band, not band, band together and go, okay, we've all got these holidays. Why not make them all public holidays? So no work days. You know, rather than fighting against each other, going, oh, this is my celebration and I'm offended if you tell me Merry Christmas. I'm not offended if you say Happy Hanukkah, um, whatever it is, Kwanzaa, choose your, your holiday, choose your special event. Um, why don't we get together <laughs> and start a petition to say, okay, these are all important days and they should be public holidays. We should have days off and we should all celebrate together. That's... Um, that's what I think we should do. I've, I've been saying that for a long time. I think we should all get together and, and have all these pu- these special holidays as public holidays rather than arguing against each other and, and getting offended. So with that last note, I will say to you, Merry Christmas, and I hope when your special event comes up that you wish me well for that event too. Thank you for being part of the Share.Care community and helping people around the world prosper you're creating a bigger pie for everyone to share. The more people contributing to the world being a better place, the better the world becomes for others and for you.